Hi everyone, it's Sam McGuire from Enterprise DNA here. Going to go over a really amazing topic, or intro- introduce a really amazing topic in, inside of Power BI, and especially with DAX, uh, in, in today's tutorial. It's all about basket analysis. Now, there's just no way I could do everything to do with basket analysis justification in one tutorial, but I want to introduce some of my best practice tips uh, in this video around how you can do it and how you can do it intuitively and successfully yourselves. There's so many different ways that you could slice and dice different baskets, etc. But the techniques that I show you today, I I I, I hope and 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 I'm confident will uh, set you up for understanding what we're doing here, and then some in some way, shape, or form, replicating it in, in, into your own models. Now there is a bit of material out there around basket analysis, but uh, and and I certainly in the past have have um, have read it and benefited from it, but I I've evolved it I feel into what I think is a better way to do it, a more a far more intuitive way to implement this in in your models. And I'm going to show you um, how how I do that uh, in here, and it's and I think you'll be surprised at how I do it, um, and pleasantly surprised because I think you understand it a lot better than some of the very very advanced and complex formula out there around how this is actually done. Now I'm going to first of all I'm going to jump to I'm going to jump to my model because this is this is where what I think is essential here okay what is essential to getting this right now let's just think about what are we even doing with basket analysis well with basket analysis we are comparing so sorry I'll just jump back here we are comparing a one basket to another basket right so um, we're we're trying to say, say okay and, and as an example so. We have some customers who bought one grouping of products. We want to also see if they bought another grouping of products, right? And we want to compare. We want to see how many of our customers, or in this particular case, how many of our customers bought both of those product sets together. And then we can run future analysis uh, around you know, who, who, who bought one and not the other and, and, and follow them up with marketing or advertising, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where it can get really, really exciting. Now, Let's let's focus on this particular example. One one set of products versus another set of products. Now, big tip here: if you're running this type of analysis in your in your in your current models, or you're looking to implement it, is that I don't like to, um, or I have found that integrating selections like these baskets into your core model. This is what I would deem my core model, which is a very simple model that I use all the time. For examples, is a complicated way to do it, in my view. There is a much simpler way uh, through supporting tables to achieve, in my view, what we want to do for this very specific and unique uh, calculations that we do around baskets, right? And so what I do is I actually replicate replicate the products table. So you'll see here, I'll jump to the products table. So it's a very simple table. I haven't overcomplicated it at all. It's its, it's this bare bones product table. All I have done is I've created two tables of exactly the same but different names obviously and one I've called an initial basket so this is going to be say the initial basket that we select and then I've created another one called selection basket another totally new table but exactly the same um, of uh, that I'm going to call selection because we're going to make a, a, on top of it additional uh, selections right and through these supporting tables I actually have no relationships to anything we're going to integrate calculations from these tables or um, logic in these tables into our core model, but do it through formula, not through relationships. What I, what I personally find is that the relationships can overcomplicate this a little bit. And we can, through some um, great formula that uh, are in the DAX language, actually bring this in a lot easier and a lot simpler and a lot cleaner, I feel, through formula. So that's that's, that's my you know, one of my key best practice tips here is to create these basket tables uh, separately. Use them as supporting tables, put them to the side of your core data model. Then, okay, so then we need to find a way. We need to find a way to intuitively bring these into our model, right? We need to bring these calculations into our model. Now, first of all, we can use these. So you see how these are named a lot differently. They're named a lot more intuitively as well. So we've got initial product basket, uh, basket products and selection products and we can multi-select them here put them in two slices right and then I've run a, a few calculations here now the very first one is unique customers right so what I've done is I've gone and calculated a distinct count of the sales 
um, by customer name. Now, the reason why this is this is one all the way down in this particular customer is because this is actually running off of this particular um, this particular uh, relationship here, uh, and this this it, this is actually part of the core model. There's no adjustments to this calculation. So all this is doing is it's saying is there a particular customer uh, in every single row, and there is yes because customer names is the initial context here. This is where it starts to get a bit more tricky basket customers right so we want to calculate how many customers or how many of our customers we want to show who of our customers actually bought this particular grouping of products right or any selection we make we can actually change up the selection to anything we want to see how many of our customers have actually purchased this group right of products now the key thing to note here though is that this table sits out here there's no relationship to actually our sales table where all of the transactions we have um, are show, are showed right so what we need to do is we need to create some sort of formula that jumps across to that table and evaluates on that table without a relationship and this is how we do it so what we can do is we can use treat as this is a relatively new function right as is but as a seriously seriously powerful function especially if you're utilizing it this stuff analysis so all I'm doing is I'm calculating up the unique customers, but I'm applying a different relationship, a different context inside of here using treat as. Now treat as it allows us to create virtual relationships in our model. And all I'm doing is I'm creating a virtual relationship between the initial basket index, which is in that um, supporting table, and the pro product description index, which, which is where there would um, generally be a true there would generally be a true relationship, okay? But I'm doing it virtually because I feel like this is way cleaner. It's way cleaner to do it this way, okay? And then based on that different context being applied inside a calculate, we then go and calculate up the unique customers. And so now we have this dynamic calculation which continually updates based on any selection we make inside of here. Then we do exactly the same thing for our selection products, okay? So it's exactly the same pattern, nothing different, treat has, and uh, we're evaluating a different subset of products, a different basket of products here based on this selection, right? Now, here, so this is, so this is, I mean, we're really not even getting into true basket analysis here because we want to compare these two baskets, right? This is, this is, this is where um, you know it, it, the, the the more advanced logic starts coming in, and why I think it's better to set it up this way instead of having relationships going all over your model, okay? There are, just, just as a sign note, there are other ways you could do this with relationships, right? So there's, there's, there are certainly um, different forms that this could take, but this is what I feel is, is, is some new techniques that you could implement that make it cleaner, way more intuitive for you to understand this, okay, and to apply this in your own models. Now, we need to, and this is where the basket analysis comes in, we need to compare these two baskets. We want to compare all of our customers who bought this particular uh, set, right, to all of our customers who bought this particular set, okay? And um, you'll see here that we've, we've got basket, uh, our customers here and our selections here. So we need another formula which goes and calculates, well, if they are purchasing this basket and this basket, then are they, um, you know, are they purchasing the total basket, okay? And so this is how, this is how we can do it here, okay? Now, the key things to note is that the, the treat as is exactly the same as the previous calculations, right? But instead of creating like numbers or creating scalar values is what they're technically called, we are actually going to create virtual tables, okay? And we can do that via calculate table. And so what, what we're going to do instead of calculate, we've got calculate table and we're entering in values um, of the customer name index in our sales table. So what that's going to do, what this is going to do is it's going to just bring up the customers based on these selections, right? It's going to bring up a table of customers of our initial basket and a table of customers of our selection basket. And then inside of here, inside of Intersect, we're going to evaluate well, which of our customers are part of the initial basket and also are included in the selected basket um, grouping of customers. And then uh, what Insect does is it evaluates that and then it returns a table of just those particular customers and then we're then going to count rows uh, and understand how many of our customers bought both both groupings of baskets, okay? All of the products in both different baskets. So, pretty powerful stuff, right? Pretty powerful stuff.
And then the great thing about this, this is this is where it really comes in uh, in a powerful way, is that we can reuse this formula. So say, for instance, we wanted to bring in a different initial context. So I'm going to bring this into a table. Or I could then bring this total basket customers into that particular um, form uh, into that particular new context and we could see in each of these different countries how many customers purchase both groupings right and you could see how this you could start hopefully start to see how this could be applied into retail stores or um or 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 you know narrowed down in more specific regions um customer sets so over and over and over and over and over again could this be applied Okay, so I'm going to round up there. This is just an introduction. Um, there's so many ways you can build on this, and I certainly am going to dive into this much more in the future. Um, I plan to run some um, enterprise DNA member-only events um, that go very in depth into basket analysis. So, um, you know, if you want to if you want to attend those in the future, certainly evaluate if membership is right for you. But um, Hopefully you got a lot out of this. I think that this is, an, and you have know, developed these over time. These are some of my, you know, the best practice tips around this type of high quality advanced analysis. And and I think that um, there's there's many ways you can take this um, and and make this type of uh, analysis far more intuitive. Okay, all the best. Hopefully you like this one. Hopefully you like and uh, you know understood a lot of what I talked about and 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 can um, understand the concepts and apply them yourselves. Yeah, I think you can, and I'm confident that um, that you'll get a lot out of these sort of techniques in your models. If you like the content, certainly throw us a like. Really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise TNA TV. Plenty more content coming out very, very soon. Okay, talk to you later. See ya.